we're going to start discussing measures of center. Let's say that these are your data points. We could think of them as falling along a numerical line. The measure of center would be the balancing point of these data points. To define the measure of center, we're going to need to go through some notation first. We'll let n be the number of observations in a data set. For this data set, there's one, two, three, four observations, so n would equal four. The way we could denote these are x1, x2, x3, and x4. Or if your data set has more numbers, we'll just say dot, 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 up to the last observation, xn. Now sometimes it's more convenient to arrange your data numbers according to smallest to largest instead of first observed, second observed. So to indicate the smallest data set number, we'll put x parentheses 1. Parentheses means ordered. The next smallest would be x parentheses 2, all the way up to x parentheses n. This is your largest, and this is your smallest. If we want to sum the numbers in a data set, we could say the word add, or a shortcut is to just write a sigma. This is capital sigma. Lowercase sigma looks like this. That's our standard deviation. We're talking uppercase sigma right here. And all it means is to add. And I actually don't like the way I drew that sigma. This is the correct way that sigma should look. To help us explain the notation, let's go through this example. The data below represent the number of domestic violent offenses that occurred in Hillsborough County during the year of 2011, rounded to the nearest thousands. The numbers correspond to total offenses within the county in which the offender was the spouse, which would be here, parent, here, child, sibling, or other family or cohabitant of the victim, respectively. Use the data to set to help explain the new notation. Well, we could talk about them in terms of order. The first observed was spouse, x1. The second observed was parent, x2, and so forth. So there's seven observations. That tells us our sample size, n equals seven. Another thing that may be more useful would be to talk about them in terms of order. So if I wanted the smallest number here, that would be 7,000. That's x parentheses one. The next smallest number would be 8,000. That's x parentheses two. The next smallest number, 9,000. That's our third ordered observation. And if I continue in this process, we'll find that the order goes like this. So now that we have our notation down, let's go through our measures of center. The center of a data set can be described by the mean, the median, or the mode. The mean, in terms of symbols, can be described by mu for the population and x bar for the sample. Just to help summarize this, um, for you, if this is your population, remember it means all. It's our big bucket. We come in and we take a sample, a simple random sample, and we get the sample. If we're talking about means here, the mean for the population, the mean for all is mu, that's m u, and the mean for the sample is x bar x bar is the average for sum and mu is the average for all. The mode is the most frequently occurring value in a data set. The median is the observation that falls exactly in the middle of the data set. We'll need two formulas to calculate the median. The first one is for when your observations are odd and in this case your median is your ordered observation that falls in position n plus 1 divided by 2. If your sample size is even, then your median is the average of two numbers. It's the number in the n over 2 position plus the number in the n over 2 position plus 1, and then divided by 2 to get the average. Remember to make sure you're falling in the correct position, you'll need to order your observations from smallest to largest. So here's an example. We're in the same setting and for this setting we want to find the mean. Well, 
this is a set of ob observations n equals seven here this is a subset of all observations it's a subset of the population this is a sample so when you're dealing with a sample and you want to find a mean your symbol is x bar x bar is for a sample and to get the average you're going to add up all your data values and after you add up your data values you're going to divide by the number of observations seven when you do this, you will find that the mean is 29,000. So if you want a formula for your mean, the general formula says add, sum, your observed values, x sub i, and you want to add all your values from your first value all the way up to your nth value, your last value, and then divide by the amount of numbers that you added. For the exact same setting, we're now going to find the median, and the first step to finding the median is to order your observations from smallest to largest, so that's what we'll do first. The next thing you want to do is pick out which of the two formulas you should use. Here our sample size 7 is odd, so since our observed values, there's 7 of them, that's an odd number of observations, the formula for the median says x parentheses n plus 1 over 2 n here is seven observed values so we're going to plug that in seven plus one is eight and eight divided by two is four this says go to your fourth ordered observation this is our first second third fourth this number is x parentheses four so our median here is 12,000. A second way you could have gotten this answer is to think of uh, marking a number off from the top and bottom of the data set. So take away your smallest, largest, smallest, largest, smallest, largest. It leaves over the number in the middle, the median. This is the way you may have been taught in middle school. In college and in my class in specific, specifically you're going to have to use the formula if you do this tick mark method I will not give you credit alright we're in the same setting but if you notice I took away one of the observations we now only have six and I want to run through the formulas when there's only six observations um, the first case find the mode it's the number that repeats itself if you look all of these numbers are distinct so there is no mode Let's say I adjusted the data set and you saw the number 7,000 added in here. In this case, 7,000 happened twice. That's more than any other number. So the mode would be 7,000 if this is what the data set looked like. So we have the same data set here and we now want to calculate the median. To do this, we first need to order our observations from smallest to largest. So I'm going to rewrite these numbers. The next thing I'm looking at is that there are six observations, which is even. So when I grab my median formula, that says to take your number, divide by two, and then take your number, your sample size, divide by two, and add one, and then average these two positions. Plugging in six, because we said n is six, six numbers right here in this data set. All right, 6 divided by 2 is 3. 6 divided by 2 is 3, and then add 1 is 4. So this says get your third largest number. And if I'm counting, here's my smallest, and then my second, and now here's my third smallest, my third or number, 9,000. And then get the fourth, which would be 12,000 average these out and that will give back 10,500 this is the median of your data set so how do we know whether to use the mean median or mode the mode is used for large data sets or categorical data sets outliers do not affect the mode the mean is used for symmetric data um, symmetric if you're thinking of it in terms of shape would look something like this and outliers will affect your mean. 
when the data is, is symmetric, the mean will be approximately equal to the median. So your data, the mean, and the median will be at approximately the same point. Now, if your data is skewed, let's say that it's skewed right, so that tail drops off to the right-hand end, then what happens is the median stays lined up with this peak, but outliers affect the mean. They don't affect the median, right? Right here, outliers affect the mean. So out here, the, the skew could be considered outliers, and it's affecting the mean. It's going to pull the mean toward the skew. So you'll find that your mean shifts out to here. So the mean is greater than the median. If your data is skewed left, long tail on the left, this tail you could think of as representing your outliers. And the mean is affected by outliers, so the mean is going to be pulled toward the skew. The median is not affected by outliers, so the median will stay where this hump is. So you get this. The mean is less than the median when the data is skewed left. This is a huge concept. I would really study um, these three cases. This is the works cited page for this lecture.